Hi everybody, this video is for Simon Hung from Pickering, Ontario, Canada and he's very kindly bought my book and some lesson videos on my new Quaverbox website so I thought I'd return the favour. In his email to me he's asked, can you shoot a video on how to play in a cocktail lounge? Now when I think of a cocktail bar or lounge I, I immediately think of Bette Midler classics being played in a, a very overly classical way. I'm hoping that's not what you're after Simon because that, that ain't what you're going to get today. I'll keep it general and show you some basic sort of jazz lines which you can play in that sort of environment in a hotel lounge or a little jazz lounge um, and hopefully a lot of you will also benefit from that because I'll play it in the key of C, mainly white notes and although I don't know what your standard is Simon, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that you might be able to copy what I do and I'll try to keep things slow. That's another feedback point everybody's been telling me, play a little bit slower. Oh, they've also said talk a bit slower, so I'll try to talk slowly, play slowly and keep things simple so that we all get the most out of this. Okay, let's get started. We're going to use some very easy chords starting with the C major 7th. C major 7th is easy to play, it's a C triad, followed by a B at the top. The B is the 7th note of the C major scale. Every second note, starting from C. We're going to follow that up with an A minor 7, which I'm going to play in that inversion there. So you can see it's A minor, is A, C and E, A, C and E, with the 7th, the G. So in a minor 7 chord, the 7th, is always a tone below the root. It doesn't have to be played below the root, but to work out what note it is, it's always a tone below the root. So C major 7, moving my thumb down to A minor 7. The next chord is going to be D minor 7 in root position. So you can see it's D, F, A, C. D minor with a C. Then we're going to play a G7, but I'm just going to move the thumb down to play my G7 like that. I'm not going to move my second finger to the G, so it's going to be technically it's like a G9 because it's got an A in it. But it's, it's like a G chord, G, G, B, D, with an F, but instead of playing the root, I've just decided to make it a little bit easier to play by putting the A in there so that you only have to move one finger down, your thumb down, from the D minor 7 to the G7. So we have our C major 7 chord, A minor 7 chord, D minor 7 chord, G7 and that's going to be the basis of this little exercise. So I'm not here to teach you a particular song, I'm just here to teach you some basic principles so that you can apply it to any song or any progression that you create while playing in this fancy cocktail lounge of yours. C major 7. We're going to insert some notes in the right hand. I'm just using notes from that C major 7 triad, well C major 7 chord I should say. I won't play too much on the A minor 7 chord, let that be my sort of like a, a rest, rest bar. D minor 7, picking some notes there, changing to G7, going back to C major 7, Now, how do I choose these notes? I'm playing them slowly because you're asking me to play them slowly. I'll still try to talk slowly. How do I choose these notes in the right hand? The question I normally ask in return is, do you listen to a lot of jazz music? Because if you listen to a lot of jazz music, then you'll get a feel for the types of sounds you're trying to create. And surprisingly, a lot of students that I teach who want to learn jazz don't have a single jazz CD in their collection. So it's like, uh, you know, you want to be a 100 meter sprinter, but you don't own a pair of sneakers or runners. Um, you need to listen to jazz if you want to play jazz and really absorb the sound, listen to your favorite piano tracks as much as possible. So you get a feel for the rhythms, you get a feel for the harmonies created. So as I'm creating this, I'm hearing a lot of it in my head, um, but there's also theory involved. So for example, on the C major seven chord, speak slowly Terence, okay. On the C major seven chord, I'm aiming for the major seven, the B. I'm also aiming for some interesting notes like the six, which is the A. 
but I combine them with normal notes from my triad, like the E and the G. Now, wherever possible, I'll choose some nice notes. So I've got my B. And when I say nice, I mean the higher numbered notes. So things that are not just one, three, five. Otherwise, you know, we, wanna, we don't want our solo to sound like that. Then when I move to A minor seven, I'm still thinking sort of in terms of C, but I might put say a D in. Link it to my D minor seven chord. G7 chord. Let me just play a little bit for you with, you know, just a little bit faster so you get a, a sense of how it's supposed to go. So I'm just restricting myself to the white notes at the moment and or well, it's jazz you can't play jazz with only white notes um, because jazz changes from key to key so it's hard to restrict yourself to play in the key of C now I did promise I was going to play it in mainly white notes so I still will stick to that but let's sneak in on the G chord something like an A flat which is the flat 9 so and what do I mean by it's a flat 9 well G um, the A is the ninth of G. Now, if you don't believe me, you can play the scale of G major. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, why don't we call it the two? Why do we call it the nine? Well, well, let's get into that some other time. But for the time time being, you can see it's the the ninth note. So a flat nine is A flat, and it's great for for a dominant seventh chord. Now, if you don't know what a dominant seventh chord, well, let's save that for another time as well. Point is, in this example, when I'm playing a G7, it's the A flat's a pretty cool note to add. Okay, A minor. Now, who says you have to stick to single notes in the right hand? You know, once you get comfortable with it, try putting some chords in. So back to our C major 7. Instead of just going which you can do. Let's pat it out a little bit more. A minor seven. Now I know some of you will say, well, you just snuck in an F sharp on the C major chord. Yes, I did. So not going to explain why, but on a major 7 chord, you can sometimes put in the raised 4th. Major 7, C major 7, 4th of C is F, F sharp. Sometimes that works. Sounds pretty cool. Sounds better than the F anyway. Like if I go, you know, that sounds just wrong, but... It sounds better with the raised 4th instead of the real 4th. Now, what am I playing? A minor 7. going too fast so let me slow it down again A minus 7 D minus 7 how's that for a D minus 7 voicing E F C oh I can't help myself we're going too slow
A minor. Check this out. What was that? Well, I didn't really play A minor. I did start off with an A minor voicing in there, but I just decided to change it to some A7 flat 9 kind of thing. I just played this funny scale. Let's get our um, A flat, flat 9 back into our G7 chord. Stick my F sharp into my C chord. Lost you again. Slow it down. C major seven. I so should edit this video. So I'm refraining. D minor seven. Oh. Here it comes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a move I pulled up before. Slow motion. It's just a combination of G7 sharp fives, sharp nines, and flat nines, and all that kind of thing. I know I say it's just a combination, but. to end this video. I love these chords. How about we end it right here? Goodbye everybody and I hope you benefited from